brand new season. You're listening to Arkansas Preps Weekly. A natural state sports. Your top source for the biggest news in high school sports across Arkansas. Here we go, here we go. What is up, everybody? Welcome into episode 23 of Arkansas Preps Weekly here on the Natural State Sports Network. My name is Kyle Sutherland. And if you have not, make sure you subscribe to uh, either YouTube if you're watching right now on here, or you can also subscribe to the audio versions wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio. We are there. Just search Arkansas Preps Weekly. And we've got a big show for you today. We are switching over to the football portion of our summer series. As we finish the baseball and softball portion last week, we had Razorback softball coach Courtney Diefel on to finish it off. And then before that, we had Valley View All-American Slade Caldwell, a great interview that uh, the baseball guru Kevin Bohannon did with him, who Slade just went in 29th overall to the Arizona Diamondbacks on Sunday night in the MLB draft. So with that, we are going to kick off the football portion with Mississippi State kicker and Harding Academy alumnus, Mr. Kyle Ferry. Really enjoyed covering Kyle back when he was at Harding Academy. Certainly the best kicker that I've ever covered personally. Maybe the best that we, and probably the best specialist that I've ever covered in general. Uh, one of the best that's ever come through Arkansas. And he earned a, sp- a starting spot as a true freshman for Mississippi State and then goes into his sophomore year. So going to talk a good bit about that. Had an, a, a mostly up, but an up and down freshman campaign. Uh, had had a, a lot of, uh, I would say, again, more so up than anything. Uh, 72% of his field goals, he was perfect on extra points. So we'll talk about some of the lessons that he's taken in his first year uh, going into his second year of college. And then, of course, his recruiting and all that good stuff when he was at Harding Academy. It's always interesting hearing some of the stuff from you know the punters and kickers that might be highly rated, but obviously it's a lot different than maybe a running back or quarterback. So going to pick his brain a little bit on this and excited to talk with him. So without further ado, here is Kyle Ferry, current Mississippi State kicker and Harding Academy alumnus. Welcome. I almost, almost slipped up there big time. I almost said Ole Miss starting this off really bad. Mississippi State kicker. I was just looking at, so you got to forgive me, Kyle. I was just looking at something Ole Miss about 10 minutes ago. Oh, Not yeah. at all, really hardly football related, but I'm starting off on a bad foot. But Mississippi State uh, starting kicker Kyle Ferry, who uh, is also a Harding Academy alum. And so, Kyle, I got to tell you, too, I am thinking about how I've done probably – Six, seven hundred podcasts at this point. I've never interviewed a specialist that I can recall. So really excited to uh, to start picking your brain on this. But first off, man, welcome. It's good to talk with you. It's been a little bit. Yeah, thank you for having me on. I'm excited. Yeah, and uh, well, let's just kind of talk about you know the past year. You got a unique opportunity to start as a true freshman, um, and you know you came in. Obviously, you were not shy about how Mississippi State has been your dream school pretty much since. Uh, I mean, really, you were a kid, especially when you started the uh, recruiting process. So, just kind of talk about you know your freshman season. I know that there were some opportunities that you guys had missed, but just overall in that regard, and then just kind of uh, going through your freshman season as a student. Yeah. Uh- Freshman year, kind of like a fever dream almost. Like, uh, you know, you dream about it for so long, and then, you know, finally it it comes to you. And you, at some points, I didn't even know what to do. Like, man, this is what I've dreamed about my whole life, and now I I get to live it out for the next four years. And, you know, most people, like you said, don't get to play as a true freshman. Uh, It's hard to play as a teenager in the SEC. And so, you know, getting that chance to go out and do my job for – my school, my team, you know, for everybody meant the world to me. Um, there were really two games I look back on that I wish I could have back. Uh, and there were the two games that meant the most to me. So uh, I don't know what, what that means, but, uh, you know, that I don't know if it's a test or what, but uh, Arkansas and Ole Miss were the two games that uh, I went over on. And so those are really the two games I'd love to have back. I uh, went over two in the Egg Bowl. Uh, hit the crossbar from 50 that would have put us within a touchdown in the fourth quarter. That one, that one still hurts. Um, and then Arkansas, it was the only miss I had inside 40 all year. And so those were really the two games I'd love to have back, but you know, 10 of the 12 went my way. So um, can't be too mad at that. And, you know, overall I, I was pretty pleased with myself. Uh, I, it, it's hard to come, you know, I'm going from a three, a 
Arkansas high school to where you're playing in front of maybe a thousand people until you get to the state championship in front of, and then you go within what eight months of my last high school game, I'm playing in front of four or 5 million people across the world. And so I think, you know, that was, it made me grow up quite a bit. Um, really this past year, I saw myself grow spiritually, mentally, physically, I really, the whole nine yards. And so, uh, you know, it just meant the world to me that I got to carry out my dreams so quickly. And you're talking about getting to play in front of millions of people. Well, now, as of, so we're, we're recording about 24 hours after the new NCAA football game came out. Now people can play as you. You can play as yourself now right. growing up. Now, you were – the last time that game came out, I mean, you were probably – not eight, nine, yeah, you're about eight, nine years old. I was actually 23, so I was in, I was just getting out of college. And of course, you know, growing up, we would always create ourselves. And now I'm seeing these kids that I recruited that actually are that I didn't recruit that I covered, not recruited, uh, get to be themselves on a game. So, what is that like? I know that uh, you they have you right footed when you're actually left, but other than that, it, it definitely kind of looks like you, in my opinion. What, what's that like being on a video game? Oh, uh, extremely weird. Um, like I, I don't really know how to explain it because it's like it's almost laughable to me. Like like we, we were playing the game last night because you know the uh, every athlete that's in the game got paid six hundred dollars and then got a game code for the deluxe edition. So like it's really seven hundred dollars we got paid to be in this game. I mean I was just like if you just give me the the, the game I I'll just I don't care you know and so yeah. uh, so there was an added bonus to being in the game. But like we were playing last night and I was like I don't even know if I want to be state like I. I don't know if I want to miss a field goal with myself in the game. Like, what, what do I do? Like, like, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it was it was really interesting, uh, to say the least, when we, we ended up being Mississippi State. And, you know, I kicked a field goal, and I was just like, this is so weird that, like, my name and number. And, like, I think it, they did a great job. Like, my hair is on point. Like, yeah. I thought they did a great job with my uh, my feature. So, you know, it's, it's, it's extremely weird, though. Like, people think it's pretty cool, but I almost am kind of weirded out. Yeah. Now, did you, as far as I, I think most of them, they just got the pictures as far as like trying to create the likeness. Did they do any? And I know on, on like Madden, they actually bring some of the players into the studio and stuff and they do like the AI. Did, did they basically just maybe get some like kind of basic information from you or really just as far as getting you paid? Uh, I think they just kind of paid me. I've never talked directly to anyone from EA. Like, got it. Okay. Once- they kind of just tell me what to do here. Click on this link, put your banking information in on M- Monday, July 15th at 8 PM. You'll get your code for the game. So I never really talked to anyone from me. I think they just went online and got our information from there. Uh, gotcha. Okay. That, that, that would be my guess. I don't know yeah. if they someone from our team or how that worked, but uh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, and speaking of football, obviously a big reason why we're, uh, why we're talking right now, you really you did not start playing until you were in seventh grade. Now that's not extremely common, especially you grew up playing soccer. Um, now, now is it is it your stepdad that's from Scotland? No, it's my actual. Dad. Your your, da- your dad's is okay. So I know yeah, I know your stepdad was a uh, big Mississippi State fan, which played a uh, really big part in that. Now um, you so in seventh grade you played absolutely hated it and, and you can correct me on any of this if i'm wrong didn't play for two years and then it was the 2019 egg ball the infamous 2019 egg ball i know it ended up well in mississippi state's favor right. but that's kind of when you realized hey I, you know i could play on this field i could play for this team someday and this is what i want to have a future in yeah i mean really just watching that dude miss and like i i just thought like obviously i'm so naive because i'm a freshman in high school and freshmen in high school are stupid and so like I was like, man, that's a that's 32 yards, and that man just missed that. I, I can kick the ball 32 yards. And so, like, it just started getting in my head, like, okay, I think I can do this. And then, you know, Coach Coach Evans never let me – like, he did, never let me just kick. He always wanted me to play a position. And, like, I was pretty athletic, so, like, I understood the fact that he wanted me to do that, but, like, I just wouldn't do it. I didn't want to get hurt for soccer. You know, soccer was always the plan. And then he came to me after freshman year Bible class. He was my teacher, and he was like, "Listen, we'll let you just kick. Just we need somebody to come kick." And then that was my that was right after we went undefeated, fifteen and zero, won the state championship. So I was like, "I mean, we're probably pretty good. I mean, I might as well give it a shot." And then you know, kind of the rest is history. But yeah, my first actual football season kicking the ball was twenty twenty. So we're not even we're just about four years into this thing. 
Yeah, in 2020, I think that was actually the most points. You you guys beat McGee in the state championship like 71 to 48 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, yeah, that was a a lot of points, especially combined uh, points scored. But your junior year, and you've obviously heard this story many, many times, but, you know, all the media before the state final, that was when you all played Prescott. So I was actually – I'm trying to think. So 2021 – I was working sidelines for PBS. I was doing the sideline reporting for that. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was up there and we had heard about this kid that had a really big leg from Harding Academy. And I remember I was up in on media row on press row, whatever, going to get something to eat. And I see you out of my peripheral, like kick it, kick and connect on like a 60 yard field goal. And I'm like, Whoa, what's going on here? So that was kind of, I mean, that was when, you were really starting, like, I guess it was after you, between your sophomore and junior year that you really began to get ranked and recruited and stuff like that. But that was kind of like the first taste on a statewide level that some of the media, some of the other, you know, people that weren't familiar with Harding Academy got. So kind of talk about that between your sophomore and junior year. You go to a Coles camp, you kill it, you start getting looked at and recruited by Arkansas, Oklahoma, Baylor, but you weren't getting recruited by Mississippi State yet. It was actually legendary run. I know this is kind of a lot at once right here, but it was Ron Polk by, uh, via Coach Shane Fullerton that really helped you get that. So talk just a little bit about that year from going from sophomore to junior year, and we'll kind of start with just getting looked at before Mississippi State got on you. Yeah, so uh, the end of my sophomore year, I had a pretty good year. I was like eight for nine on field goals. Uh, I had a 48-yarder against Newport. And so, like, my coaches kept telling me, hey, we know this guy, like Cole's kicking is like a big thing, just kind of – check it out and see where you are. And at that point I was still thinking soccer, 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 because I just came off a all state freshman year for our soccer team. So I was like, man, I really think I can go. I was getting D one interest, power five interest from soccer. So I was like, I mean, I I might just do it. Just screw it. Just go. So I went to Dallas and did it. Unbelievable. It was probably still my best day kicking I've ever had. And uh, got invited to go to Florida to the next camp where it's like an invite only. I don't know how many people go, but it's not a lot at all especially sophomores. And so went to that. And then like two weeks later, the rankings came out. I couldn't even sleep. I was so nervous to see what I was and ended up being ranked eighth in the country. And so after that, I mean, the rest is really history after that ranking. Uh, Eighth in the country, I mean, out of probably 500, 600 kids uh, really starts getting you looked at. And so after that, I was kind of like, well, uh, I'm definitely not eighth in the country in soccer. So this is the way to go. And then started getting looked at by these schools that I, like like I said, played played on the video game with when I was 10 years old. And I, it's just so interesting to me that, like, now this is this could be my life, uh, everyday life. And so Baylor really got on me hard. Isaiah Hankins, another Arkansas-based kicker. Uh, Little Rock Christian, we kicked together. Still, my, That was my sophomore year. He was a senior at Little Rock Christian. We kicked together, and he was getting recruited by Baylor. So the coaches, I guess, have already heard about me or whatever through him. So they started recruiting me. And then, of course, if Baylor's recruiting you, then OU has to get on you. And then OU and Baylor are on you, and you're in their state. So then Arkansas gets on me. And then, like, now I'm starting to get recruited by these massive schools, and I've only played one season of football. And so, like, it was kind of like I started having to build this kind of self-confidence where it was almost a cocky kind of give-off because I had to be confident in myself because I say it all the time. If I'm not confident in myself, what makes you think 60,000 people with a cowbell are going to be confident in me? And so it really starts with you, especially as a specialist, really any position, but I've never played another position. So I don't know, but I mean, I've always tried to be a confident kid because with being a kicker, if you're not confident in your kicker, you're in a lot of trouble. And so if your kicker is confident in himself, that probably rides about 90% of it. And so, you know, I just try to be confident in myself, like, I'm supposed to be here. Like I'm supposed to be getting recruited by these schools. I'm supposed to be where I am on this stage. And so I really just went to work. And then uh, the next year, I didn't really go to anything else. Uh, I just wanted to get ready for junior year. Uh, I set the national record my junior year for most touchbacks in a year. Helps when you score a lot of points. Uh, and so that, that wasn't even really on me. I mean, that's really on our offense, just scoring 112 times. And so uh, got to do that. And then really that's when stuff took off. Uh, You know, if you can have that kind of leg as a junior, a lot of colleges realize you're raw and you don't have to develop as much. And, you know, these guys are making, I mean, special teams coordinators nowadays are making anywhere up to $800,000. And so, I mean, 
you've got to get a guy who can come in and do it. And that was really before the transfer portal really took off. And so then I got a bunch more interest. Uh, then my junior – and that was after my junior year. So junior year spring, I started taking visits. Went to Oklahoma, Arkansas, Baylor, Mississippi State. Those are kind of the four schools that were on me the most. Uh, all of them had a new coordinator too, which was funny, except Arkansas. Scott Fountain was there. Oklahoma just got a new guy. Baylor just got a new guy. And Mississippi State just got a new guy. So it kind of helped me out because it's like, okay, these guys haven't been recruiting very long. And so this is my chance to really mark up when I go to visit, you know, be respectful, you know, get up on the list. And so uh, my junior year in the summer, I went to Baylor, Arkansas, and Mississippi State. Oklahoma didn't work out. I chose Baylor over Oklahoma's camp. Um, Mississippi State offered me. Baylor would have offered me if I went back. But that once I got the offer from Mississippi State, it was, it was a sealed deal. And I committed two weeks later. And then I, I really wanted to commit before my senior year. That was a big thing because I really wanted to be able to focus on uh, my team and what we needed to accomplish moving up a classification especially. Didn't want my recruiting to be a distraction in the locker room or in my head at all or even in my coach's head, you know, thinking, okay, maybe we need to send him out there for a long field goal so that he gets recruited harder, you know. Didn't want that to even be in question. And so uh, committed at the end of June uh, to Mississippi State in 2022. And then uh, after that, it was, all, it was all sealed deal, baby. Let's get to work. And uh, had a good senior year. Uh, lost in the state championship, which sucks, but uh, it was a really fun year. And then got to go to work uh, in the spring, getting ready to go to Startville. And then, you know, the rest is history after that. I had my mic muted. If your story is not a perfect example of how important relationships are, because you didn't get the Mississippi, I mean, you did by what you did on the field, but I'm saying the root of that was from baseball coaches. And for those that aren't familiar with Shane Fullerton, uh, he is not, I mean, it goes without saying he's one of the best in the state. I would put him as one of the best regionally, maybe even nationally with some of the things that he's done. Well, coach Fullerton, I think he was one of your teacher or he was the athletic director and he had connections to Ron Polk. And, you know, you think about Ron Polk, Dave Van Horn, Mike Martin, the best coaches to ever coach in baseball that they're, uh, they're great coaches in their own right, but certainly the best that never won a national championship. But to have that connection and that ends up in a football uh, preferred walk on. And now of course you're on full scholarship that's that's just insane to me and that again just shows how much relationships matter but uh and that's that's interesting too in the regard is obviously you took plenty of flack for not choosing arkansas i mean anybody that grows up in arkansas but that's something that a lot of people might not understand i mean i know as your recruiting began to take off people kind of started to see the tie and the and the everything to mississippi state but i mean even though you were growing up in arkansas you've pretty much always been a mississippi state boy right and uh, just the way that, you know, Arkansas, you know, they just had a guy go to the Jags who's really good. And so, like, you've got you've to gotta play your cards right, uh, especially if you actually want to go play. A lot of kids these days really just want to go somewhere just so they say they went there. And that wasn't me. I wanted to play and knew I could play. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of people tell me, like Jamie Cole especially, probably the most seasoned kicking coach, kicking exposure, kicking anything in the in the entire world is through Jamie Cole. And if Jamie Cole tells you you can go play as a true freshman somewhere, then by golly, you can do it. And so that, that really wasn't me. I didn't want to just go to Arkansas just because I was from there and be the hometown kid or whatever, uh, just because I knew I wasn't playing over Cam Little. I mean, you've just got to be realistic in this business, and that's just the realistic thought. I mean, there's a reason he went to the Jags after three years and didn't even have to play his fourth year. And so uh, it just fell in line that Mississippi State had two grad kickers my senior year who were both done. So in January of 23, there was nobody at Mississippi State who had ever kicked the ball. So therefore, that's a huge chance for me to go play because no one else has done it there. No one has done it there. Even if they go get a transfer, he still hasn't kicked at Mississippi State. He hasn't kicked for our coach. So really, we were all kind of on a level playing field, which is why I chose Mississippi State as well. That was probably honestly 40 percent of it. 60 percent of it, of course, is because I always wanted to play there. But the other 40 percent is because I knew I could. And so really, that's I played my cards luckily correctly. And it, it ended up benefiting me for the better. But, uh, you know, I, I was just happy to uh, 
commit to Mississippi State. I was just happy to go somewhere big and not just, you know, somewhere that was comfortable. I wanted to get out of my comfort zone and, you know, do something that most kids, especially at Harding Academy, don't get to do, but in the entire world. Uh, you know, not so many kids would kill to be in my position. And, you know, I don't take that lightheartedly either. Um, you know, I try to be thankful for my opportunity every day. Uh, so many kids, like I said, would love to be where I am. And so, you know, not take advantage of it and really live in the moment. And, you know, like I was telling you, meals are mandatory. No one wants to be told when to eat. But, you know, be happy that you get free food at a facility that, you know, is a top-notch facility in the entire world and you've got your own chef. And, you know, just be grateful for that instead of thinking, oh, I've got to go eat. You know, it's like, man, I get to go eat and I get to go be around my teammates. And so that's really one of the perspectives I've took from this past year is that, you know, things can happen like that in college football. Every coach I had last year is gone. And including the, the guy who recruited me out of high school who I was like this with, you know, he's gone. And so it's like stuff can happen so fast in this. I mean, I can be gone next. I mean, it, anybody's replaceable. And so really just, you know, being thankful for my opportunity every day has gone a long way this spring and this summer. Uh, talking about the ups and downs, you mentioned at the beginning, you know, there were two games in particular being Arkansas and then Ole Miss and the Egg Bowl uh, that you really look back on. You're like, man, I wish some things could have ended up different. But, you know, the the Ole Miss one, uh, and obviously this is this is a touchy subject, I know, but you know, that one I think was really your true character in a good way came out. And what and the reason I say that is when I go on social media, I think you know where I'm probably going with this. When I go on to Twitter, X, whatever anybody wants to call it, and I especially see people going after a kid that I know personally, that I covered, and especially when it gets really bad. It's one thing to say, oh, you suck or whatever. But when you start getting personal, I, I, I take that person. Well, then I see you and I'm like, this kid's having fun with it. Like he's not even, you know, he realizes, yes, it's just a game. Yes, it's important. But really, it's just a game. And I would say probably more so than a lot of athletes I've seen. Now, there's some that take, you know, just their subtle jabs and they go. But you you have fun with Ole Miss fans. You have fun with college football fans. So wh where does that come from? Where does that whole thing about? I mean, I know, obviously, in that moment, it was really tough. That night when it happened, it was really tough. But one day at a time, one thing happens yeah. and you just move on. So where does that come from? Uh, I think it came a lot. I had a... I don't he, – he probably will watch this. Dr. Case is our sports psychologist at Mississippi State. He does a fantastic job. He's, I, In my opinion, he's the best in the country. And so we had mental health training every week. And, you know, one thing we always said was you're only as good as your next kick. And, and so, like, for me, I knew after the Egg Bowl that my next kick was going to be next season. So, therefore, we can throw this season away. You know, there, we don't have to dwell on it. I can't go back and kick it again. Like – and no one's out there to save me when it's just me kicking. And so for me, I'm only as good as my next kick. I mean, I can make a 50 yarder, but it doesn't matter. My next kick is what matters. And so, you know, then I have to go kick a 30 yarder. Well, if I miss that, well, it doesn't matter. I'm only as good as my next kick. So that's really the, the mentality I took to try to not dwell on things because, you know, it's, it's a lot bigger stage. And so it can get in your head quite a bit. And then the other part of it is like, I, everyone grew up a fan of some team, some player. And so knowing that I'm in that role now and as a kid growing up and never really seeing people interact, like it's almost like college athletes think they're too cool to respond to people on social media, especially. And so like I try to go out of my way to make sure that, you know, people are being able to interact with somebody who's doing it because I'm only on this platform for three more years and I want to make sure that I take advantage of it. And so like for three more years, I don't get to really, I mean, for only three more years, I get to respond to people and have fun about college football or whatever it is. And also it's social media. 50, I'd say even 75% of these people would never say that to my face. <laughs> and so like for me, I, th I think it's funny because it's like, you wouldn't say it to my face. Therefore you're kind of joking without joking. So I take it as a joke. And so like, okay, I'll joke back with you. Like, so for me, I, I don't take social media very deep. I mean, it's part of the game. And like, I don't know, it just it's never been something that bothers me with people reaching out. I mean, that's part of playing football. That's part of getting to do what I do is a lot of people watch and a lot of people take notice. And so for me, I just like to kind of be a fan favorite because I grew up a fan. And so I know what it would be like if, you know, growing up, if Dak had reached out, you know, like, obviously, I'm not Dak and I'll never be Dak. But you know what I'm saying? Like if a player reached out to you, if a player did something cool. And so that's really kind of the mentality I take it is that like, I'm just a normal kid. Uh, 
I, I'm just a normal kid who kicks footballs on Saturdays. And so, you know, I, that's what I want people to realize is that, yeah, we're college athletes and yeah, we do this as a job. And yeah, a lot of people would kill to be, but at the end of the day, we're just 19 through 24 year old kids who just are doing what we love to do. And so that's really the, the mentality I take on it to social media is that I just try to be, you know, I try to give somebody a laugh or I try to give somebody, you know, insight that they wouldn't get uh, from just a normal fan or a normal person, you know? So that's really the, that that's the whole social media thing. And I just love it. I, I just love causing havoc and pissing on all these people off. It's probably my favorite thing to do. Yeah, I will say I, uh, I mean, while I do keep an open mind since I do a little bit of national coverage as well here and there, I, I grew up absolutely despising Ole Miss too. Oh, so I, I can, I could, yeah, I about to say, so that hopefully makes up for me almost calling you Ole Miss kicker at the entrance there or at the, at the intro there. But, uh, so that was what you know, maybe the nation will remember you as is just because that's the last time that they saw you, you know, with that, with that kick and everything, but overall had a very successful season. You connected on 73% of your field goals. You had a long of 49, perfect on extra points, 27 to 27, your best game coming in a 37 to 30 loss to South Carolina. You had that 49 yard field goal, three for three on field goals and then three for three on extra points. So I do want to ask you talking about just the, the head space part of it. When, when you first went, I can't remember who y'all opened up against. I was watching it, but I can't remember who it is. When you took the field as a college athlete for the first time in a real game, were the butterflies just unbelievably intensified, or was that maybe something that you kind of got over in pregame? Yeah, so it's it's the weirdest thing I've ever experienced. So in high school, like, you know, the jitters come, the butterflies come. You know, you've got to go relieve yourself in the bathroom. Like, that's just part of it. And that that's me. I was the most nervous kid ever. City League soccer, I was having to go relieve myself because I couldn't handle it. Like, I had to – like, my stomach was killing me. And, like, I woke up Saturday. Now, granted, it's southeastern Louisiana. No disrespect to them, but, like, SEC, FCS, I mean, it's just different. And so, like, luckily it wasn't like, oh, my, we're opening up against Florida. You know, so – and it was at home, which helps. And so, like, all day I was just waiting to get nervous. Like, I was like, okay, like, come on, it's time to get nervous. Like, we're, we're, about, to, we're about to do this thing for real. And, like, the nerves just never came. It was almost like, a, I don't know, probably in SEAL training, they've got to be a little nervous that they're about to do this. And then once it's time to go, that, you know, their, their mind flips and they just do it. And so I was kind of like, for me, I, I was never nervous. I, like, now I could I don't even remember jogging onto the field. Like I can't even tell you what that was because I forgot. Like I'm blank. And so like I guess also be, it being a 47 yarder and it's Mississippi State. No one expects me to make this. Like that's that was kind of the that's the only thing I remember jogging onto the field. It's like, dude, no one expects me to make this. This is perfect. Like it's not like it's a 27 yarder on the hard hash. I mean, this is just a left middle kick from 47. I mean, we do this in our sleep. It's like, and nobody in this stadium thinks I'm going to make it. So if I miss it, well, guess what? That's what they all thought. So it's fine. And so it was kind of like a win-win situation in my head. And so then, you know, drill that one. And then at the end of the half, there's a 49-yarder. And before all this, this this first week, they were like, we're not going to kick anything deep. We don't want to add this pressure to you, whatever. First drive, 47. All right, go. I'm like, what's deep, coach? I mean, I can only go so much further. And then, you know, 49 yarded in the half, and I thought, okay, these people definitely think I got lucky, and they don't expect me to make this one either. And then, you know, drill that one right down the pipe. I mean, I murdered that ball. And I don't remember that one either. I don't even remember jogging off the field there. And so, uh, can you still see me? Yeah. All right, good. Then my thing just went off. Oh, yeah. May have some internet issues. Can you see my face still? Yeah, yeah, you're I'll still on. It. I'll keep it. And so <laughs> then – uh you know, jogging off the field. And then after week one, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm like on top of the world, but we still got 11 more games to go. And so, you know, it was kind of just like doing my job. You know, I have a simple job. I mean, it is as simple as it gets. I mean, the ball's on the tee. I mean, you just whack it just as straight as you possibly can kick it, just straight every time. And so that was kind of the mentality I took, trying to not get in over my head with all the social media stuff, you know, one SEC freshman of the week that week, and I really hated that. I really did because I was like, oh, here we go. Now the expectation's on. Like, now the expectation of them thinking, okay, well, if this kid made a 47 and a 49, well, 
surely to God he can make anything else. I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. He's the worst out of the way. So that was probably the worst part of week one was like, okay, now the expectation's on me. But, you know, sometimes I just – I like the pressure. I mean, I love it. And so it wasn't it wasn't even that bad of a thing. So, yeah, but week one was crazy. Uh, but I couldn't tell you. I mean, I can't answer your question because I forgot what I did when I jogged onto the field. <laughs> I blank. I bl- absolutely blank. It's easy to do, man. Dream, dream coming true and just something that you, you work for your entire life, essentially. And Or in your case, you work for, you're already pretty good at it. You work really hard at it and then you achieve it. So it's definitely understandable. So well, as we wrap it up here, I uh, wanted to always like to end these, the, what we've been doing in the summer series, just interviewing former Arkansas prep stars that are now shining at the next level. Just kind of talking about some, uh, A, some advice for the younger crowds, but also just some things that you have overcome. As we've talked about, you had a mostly uh, up, but an, a little bit of an up and down freshman year, just like anybody's going to have. But also, too, that I don't know is extremely documented. You know, you talked about losing that state title game your senior year. And not only that year did or in that week did you lose a state title game, you lost your grandmother, you lost Coach Leach, who you had committed to. So you're dealing with things as an 18-year-old kid that would bring a grown person uh, to their knees, essentially, and you having to deal with all that. Uh, what is something that you learned maybe from that entire week? And then also uh, maybe how you took the adversity or the lessons that you learned from that adversity on into your freshman year? Yeah, I mean, I think one thing I took away was, one, we definitely uh, don't underestimate anybody. Uh, I think, you know, after we beat Arkadelphia in the semifinal, it was like, okay, well, we just won. Uh, essentially, uh, I think mentally. I mean, that's what I did. I almost mentally checked out of the game. I don't know why. Malvern was a really good team, so I don't know why I mentally checked out. It was kind of like, okay, we we won that game. So it's like, okay, we, we've done what everyone said we couldn't do. You know, that was that, it wasn't even that we couldn't win the state championship. It was that we couldn't beat Arkadelphia. And then, you know, we beat Arkadelphia, and it's like, okay, we did everything that the media said we couldn't do. So obviously this is just going to be a run through. We're going to win the state championship, whatever. So, I mean, that's one thing I learned was don't underestimate any situation, whether, you know, you're on top of the world or not, because, you know, I hit a game winner on the Friday, and by the next Saturday I lost my college head coach, my grandmother, and the next game. So within eight days I went from the top of the world to something I've never done before, which is hit a game winner, to about as low as it gets. And then the other thing I took away was that, you know, life's not guaranteed. I mean, you lose two people pretty unexpectedly. Uh, in the same week, almost in the same day. And so really just, I I just wanted to start living life to the fullest. And so that's really what I've been trying to do this past year. That's why I'm on social media because, you know, I've realized I don't get this forever. I get it for four years and, you know, I've got to take advantage of it before it's gone because it can be gone within a heartbeat. I mean, really anything can happen. You know, I can get hurt week one this year and be medically retired and never get to play again. And I mean, that's just, that's just a, that's a fact. And so, really, I've just got to take advantage of every time my number's called. And so that's one one uh, advice I'd give to a younger kid is every time your number's called, go take advantage of it because your number's not going to be called forever. So anytime your number's called, you got to go take it, take advantage of every opportunity you get because your opportunities are running out. And then if you take advantage of every opportunity, you're going to get more opportunities. And so, really, that would be that'd be my thing. And then another thing is be grateful for where you are whether it's D3, D2, JUCO, D1, Power 5, Dream School, whatever it is, be grateful for where you are because a lot of kids would kill to be where you are. And uh, be grateful for your opportunity. I mean, not every kid, especially at Harding Academy, be grateful for getting to move up to 5A. Be grateful for that because you get way better gains. I mean, beating people by 50 was almost boring junior year. I mean, that was boring. Be grateful that you get to go play Benton. Be grateful for that you got a chance to go win a state championship in 5A that our school's never done that. I mean, so just just stuff like that. Be grateful for adversity. I mean, you, you're going to have to face adversity in your life, but, you know, that that's really all I got. It's just, you know, be grateful and be thankful for where you are. No matter if it's – no matter what level, if you're not playing anymore, be grateful for what you did. Be thankful for what you did. And, you know, hug, hug your loved ones for sure because, uh, you know, you don't have them forever, and, you know, that's really all I got. 
We've been talking with Mississippi State kicker and Harding Academy alumnus Kyle Ferry. Kyle, really appreciate the time, man. It was great catching up with you. And we also look forward to seeing uh, a new look Mississippi State this year under Jeff Levy. Really exciting offense that he's uh, he's been an offensive coordinator up to this point. Um, and, then, and of course, uh, Kendall Bryles, his brother-in-law, Arkansas, uh, had him for, what, four seasons. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing that, man. But always great catching up with you. And uh, I know that you're just going to continue to do good things. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having me on. Hell State, go Cats.